Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to all of those here in church and to those joining us on home. Apologies for the slight delay in starting the service this morning. We had technical difficulties, to say the least, and we managed to get around them, we think. Um, and one of the privileges and joys of continuing to be able to reach out online to those of you who are watching is that each week by week we're asked to pray for people who are able to know and receive and join us in worship through online and know that they are prayed for. For example, you may remember that um, we prayed for Mary Jo who had a major operation up in Dublin and she's now finally home after seven or eight weeks in hospital. So it's an illustration of the power of prayer, an illustration that out of the difficult times of COVID, some unusual and unexpected blessings come. So we're grateful that we can all be together in physicality or digitally today. For all of us, whether near or far, I just want to go through the announcements. And uh, this evening, there is a prayer and praise service Please note that will only be happening in physical, not digital, uh, as there will be a time for ministry at the end of that service where we can pray specifically laying hands on people for specific needs and circumstances. And as yet, we haven't managed to work out how to move hands digitally. Uh, please note that on Monday, there's a vestry meeting. And uh, for some reason, it didn't make it into the notices, but on Tuesday, there's a vestry meeting for Cultivo Parish. There's quite a number of things coming up towards the end of this month, because if you want to have a coffee in aid of Donegal Hospice, um, go, please go to Hazel Key's home on the 15th. If you want to support a vintage tea at the Methodist Church in Donegal, then you can have a tea on the 17th. And then if you wish to go to the young person's service in your Faux Cathedral, that will be on the 18th. So there's plenty of happening around that weekend. Also to let you know, there's a leader's rest and retreat day on the 1st of October. Uh, and then a big thank you to Kirsty as she prepares a lot of material for children. And she's put that stuff online for Sunday school and for families. And you'll find the links there on our notice sheet. And for those of you who are joining us digitally, all those things can be found on our website which is janorler.rafo.anglican.org. So our service this morning is Holy Communion. And as we do each Sunday, we greet ourselves, uh, greet each other in the name of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. And as I do in recent times, I always begin with a the theme of the service, which is always based on the readings and usually the gospel reading, and this is the case today, and the challenge that has been laid down to us by Jesus through today's gospel reading, and this is from the message version. Simply put, if you're not willing to take what is dearest to you, whether it's plans or people, and kiss it goodbye, you cannot be my disciple. Quite a challenge from Jesus, and we'll come back to look at that in a little bit. But before we come to that, we come to God in prayer and we say together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. And as we come before God, we recognize as we begin the week, this being the first day of the week, we begin it afresh with God and his ways. So let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. In silence, we come to confession before God.
Let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing our first hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. Collect for this Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to say to ask, save through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. 
Please be seated for our first reading from the book of Jeremiah. The first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18, beginning at verse 1. The word had come to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare, concerning a nation or a kingdom, that I will pluck it up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation, concerning which I have spoken, turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intend to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am the potter, shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn now to our psalm, which we read together, verses 1 to 5 and then 12 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there's not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Amen. Our gradual hymn before our gospel reading is Fight the Good Fight with All Thy Might. It's number 566 if you're following it in the hymn books. Please stand to sing.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, uh, beginning at verse 25. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Glory Jesus Christ. Christ. Now large crowds were travelling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot meet of my disciples. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple, for which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost, see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and he was not able to finish. Or a king going out to wage war against another king will not first sit down and first then consider whether he is able to with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him for 20,000. If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciples if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, please be seated. Lord, I pray that you give us eyes to hear, eyes to see, hearts and lives to respond to you the way, the truth and the life, Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, You remember what I said towards the beginning of the service, simply put, if you're not willing to take what is dearest to you, whether it's plans or people, and kiss it goodbye, you can't be my disciple. Pretty strong words, I think you'd agree, Jesus, and hopefully we'll see why he is so challenging today. So what is Jesus actually saying to his disciples? Why is he saying it? And what does it mean for us to be disciples of today? Well, many of you will obviously have heard of Winston Churchill, and when he became Prime Minister in, on May the 13th, this is what he said to his cabinet and to the Parliament of the people. He told them, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Well, that's a great way to encourage people, isn't it? But look at the context of which he spoke. Was the situation an easy one? Was all right with the world? Was all going well? No, they were at war and they were put to the back foot, so to speak. So why do you think, is Jesus really saying to abandon your family? Well, remember elsewhere Jesus said about the camel through the eye of the needle. And the eye of the needle is about the size of that door there. And for said camera to get through the door, you have to let go of your load. And it's not that Jesus is discounting the commandments, honor thy father and thy mother, but he's saying that if things are really tough and you need, you, what you're holding on to is preventing you from going forward, then you need to let go of it, even if it's your family, to take forward. I also believe he's saying that to all of us, even those of us, our family, who we might be holding on to. He's saying this is so important that nothing can hold you back. You remember we talked about the commandments at the very beginning of the service. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So he's saying when the chips are down, this is priority. So it's really Jesus saying, unless you know the full cost of the man, don't journey with him. But you remember elsewhere, somebody said, I've got to go tend to my fields. I've got to tend to my animals. I've got, Jesus says, no, leave them behind. And it's not saying, Jesus, don't be compassionate, don't be caring. But as we see in a minute, what Jesus has got for us to do is a big task, and he wants to know we're 100% committed for him and for his ways. So Jesus is saying, and I think probably Churchill may have got his idea from Jesus, we hope so, that when things are challenging and tough, our first priority is him and his ways, because there will be obstacles, there will be challenges, and there will be things that pull us away and pull us back. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
So when we're trying to stay in the way, what might be pulling us away from the way? And why is he saying that? Well, we will find supposition. He said, I am the truth. And there'll be others who will pull us away. Are things, circumstances that pull us away? And when we're really challenged, he's calling us to follow him. I was reading a commentary on this and he put it this way. Imagine if you're climbing Mount Everest and you've got your favorite book with you. Or you might even have your baby Teddy with you because it gives you a bit of comfort. And then you've got your oxygen tank. And you can only carry one thing to the summit. Which will get you to the summit? Oxygen tank. It's not that the Teddy isn't dear or wonderful to you. It's not as if the book isn't precious. But you need to press on to get to the sun. Summit. So what does it mean to be my disciple in my discipline? I remind me of the, some of the religious orders, particularly the newer ones of a rule of life, where those in a rule of life commit to pray daily, commit to come back to God, commit to stay close to God. In a sense, I think that's what Jesus is calling us. So then where do we go from here? We've looked at the high calling Jesus has placed upon us. We come next to the reading from Jeremiah. And whether Jeremiah was actually the potter's house or God was saying, remember the potter's house. He's looking at the potter's house and the potter working the clay and the clay is not right, the pot's the wrong shape. He puts it back on the wheel and reshapes it and works it to what he feels it needs to be. And God says to Jeremiah and to Jeremiah, to the people of God, house of Israel, just as the pot was done, so I need to do with you. And you need to be malleable in my hands. And the people of Jerusalem and Judea, if you don't, allow me to shape you and you go in ways that are not my ways, then you know the consequences. Who here had a cup of tea or coffee before you came to church this morning? And did you have a piece of toast or some cereal? So did you have that in a paper cup and a paper plate? You almost certainly had it on a pottery cup and plate. Well, a pottery cup and plate is a bit solid. So if you needed a cup and you had a plate, or you had a plate and you needed a cup, you can't just bend it into the right shape, can you? So while no illustration is perfect, what God is saying is, you need to be like the clay rather than the finished product, the hard clay that's fired, so that I can mold and shape you, that you may be what you need, what I, God, need you to be, and trust me that I will do what I need to do with you. Both as individuals, corporately as a church and as a society. Because we are part of the nation of Israel by adoption, through the blood of the Lamb, the cross, Jesus. So we have the high calling, and if we're committed, then we'll allow God to work on us and with us and through us to take us further. Now the next two verses, I forgot to ask John to add them in, but I have a little homework for you all to do. I'd like you to go home and find your Bibles and read the next two verses of this passage, verses 34 and 35. And this is what it says. Salt is good, but if it loses saltiness, how can it be made salty? It is neither for soil nor for the manure heap is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. What do we use salt for? Do we shake it over our dessert like icing sugar? No. We shake it over our food for flavor. What do we put over pork to make it bacon? So salt. So it brings flavor and it brings preservative. In a similar way, we are to bring the flavor of God into the world that needs it. We're to bring the preservation, the goodness of God into the world that needs it. It's often said we are the only good news gospel that others will receive. So with the world as it is, we need to be 100% committed to God 
that he can shape us, that we can be the salt that brings the flavor, that brings the goodness. Otherwise, we'll have lost our saltiness, will we? So as we reflect on that, I just want to close by reflecting on the letters of the word salt, which is not a very big word. So first and foremost, we have Savior. We need to recognize that Jesus is our Savior. We need saving. The world needs saving. It's not as if God intended this, not as it should be. We recognize that we need help. That's the place to begin with. And we need to accept forgiveness, that we've wronged, we've done wrong to God, we've done wrong to others, even perhaps to ourselves. And God is not like a metaphorical ornament on the mantelpiece, where we admire him from a, from a near distance and leave him on the mantelpiece. We need to take the acceptance that Jesus offered and say, I'm sorry, I receive your forgiveness. Help me to walk anew in your ways, your truth and you in my life, and my life in yours. And Jesus said, all who accept him, he will give the gift of the Holy Spirit. It changes from within to without. So we need to not just recognize God, but actually take hold of him and say yes to him. That our lives may be changed by his spirit through our spirit, so that we might be that salt. So as we go out from here, we carry the good news within us to those whom we meet and greet. It might be through work, it might be through deed, it might be through prayer, it might be through many ways. But we have to have the Holy Spirit and God with us. Otherwise, how can we carry that which we do not have? So that others can taste and see the Lord is good. So when we meet them and they meet us, do they see God? Do they get a taste of God? Do they get the goodness of God? With God's goodness and they go into the world. God works on a huge scale to each and every person. He does the big through the little. Now, and if that's an example through Jesus who arrived as a baby, who was born in a feeding trough, then was a refugee, then was a humble builder in the back of the army, and yet turn the whole world upside down. So not only is Jesus, Jesus is in God's Son and the Messiah, but he modeled what it meant for a human to fully be in the ways of God. And we need his help in order to do that. So may we be that salt of the Savior, accepting him in our lives, bringing the taste to others. In Jesus' name. We now come to prayer, and there's some responses which are in the bold type. We pray to the Lord for the courage to give ourselves to him as our Lord. We meet in the silence and we say together, give us strength, hear our prayer. And there we have the response again. Give us courage to look beyond ourselves to the world. We pray, Lord, that we would accept you as our Savior and we would know you in our lives and through our lives, that others may taste and see that you are good. We pray for your church, both those of us assembled here physically and digitally, and for our own group of parishes and for the nearby churches in this town and this valley. At this time, we pray especially for the parishes in Moville and the churches of that group. Within the Anglican Communion, we pray today for the Diocese, uh, the, the Church of Australia. We pray for Andrew, our Bishop, and for our Archbishop, and for all those who minister in your name, both or lay and ordained. May they and we know that the blood and water flowing from the side of Jesus at the cross bring us and your people forgiveness and help us in these challenging times to face the cost of proclaiming salvation. Let us meet in the silence. Give us strength 
and hear our prayer. Give us courage to give up war or bitterness or hatred and to seek peace. To seek peace between ourselves and you, Lord, within our own lives. Seek peace within our families, within our communities, within this land, continent and the world. We remember that you are the Prince of Peace. We pray for our near neighbours in the north where there is still much division and where there is often not much agreement and they struggle to find a way ahead, particularly for their, for their government. We pray for the people of the Ukraine and for Russia that there would be a peace. We pray for those lands that we often don't get to hear about, but yet there is division and warfare. In Somalia, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and in many other parts of the world. We know we stand on the shoulders of the risen Christ, who was scorned by soldiers, and bore the burden of political and military conflict in his world. May we bring the peer bearers of peace in this world. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our quarrels, our strife and jealousy within our families and our neighborhoods and communities. May we truly be that salt in our families and in these communities that we live. May we bring good news gospel, the presence of the risen Christ, his body that was broken and made whole for us and for all of us that he may bring peace and direction as we live with one another within our families and our communities. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to live for others, giving time, giving care, giving comfort to the sick and those in need. We pray especially at this time for those known to us, families, friends and colleagues who need your healing touch those undergoing treatment. We pray especially at this moment for Pat, for Helen, and for Geoffrey. And we pray that the wounds of, would be healed and lives and bodies made whole. May the wounded hands of Jesus Christ bring healing and the light of his presence in us fill lives and hearts with his peace and power. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us courage to give up our fear of death and rejoice with those who have died in faith. We remember those who have passed and who we miss and are no longer with us, who we carry in our hearts and minds. May the risen Lord Jesus, whose feet was once nailed to the cross, Walk alongside those who are struggling. Walk aside those who are dying, those who are bereaved and no loss. And lead them and us and all your church through death to the gate of glory. Lord, meet us in the silence. And we continue. Give us strength and hear our prayer, here and in eternity. Amen. Let us stand now. We stand as a mark of respect to our Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and with the words of the Creed, declare our understanding of the faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus said a new commandment I give you that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Bear with me a moment while I complete the preparation of the communion table. Christ, our Passover and sacrifice for us. Therefore, Therefore let us celebrate the feast. feast. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts we lift and them lift them the up Lord. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creation, sustainer of all things, you made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us, and even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and your mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and to suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice of the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. The night he betrayed, he took bread. When he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way after supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks to you, he gave to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood and your covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. <laughs> and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Do the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all Amen. honour and glory are yours, Almighty, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us sit or kneel in prayer, and as our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We be many are one body, but we all share in one body. Draw near our faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember, he died for you, and feed him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
we say together the collect after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, to him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We come to our final hymn today for the service. Number 558, if you're following it in the hymn books, Abba, Father, let me be yours and yours alone. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself and to take up your cross and to follow him. And the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God.